Michael Arnold, it's good to have you uh, back in the studio. It's been a long time. Yes, it has been. <laughs> and you've brought uh, our special little guest. Uh, so good to see Lydia back in Manitoba again. This must feel good to be back in Manitoba. It feels great. It almost feels like we never left. Well, you guys, uh, now just we can just take everybody back to the beginning of the story. Uh, back when you were here in, I believe it was uh, March of this last year, we were having a fundraiser to raise money for you to go to Edmonton uh, for a heart transplant for Lydia. That's right. And so just to give people a, just a quick recap, uh, it, once you, uh, while you were waiting for the heart, uh, they suddenly changed plans with the Berlin Heart. Yeah, we were, uh, we were at Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving dinner in La Salle. And uh, Lydia was playing outside, and she ha- she collapsed, and uh, had a bit of a scare there with her, and rushed her to the hospital. And uh, and uh, they decided that it was too risky for us to be waiting at home for the heart. So they put her on a Berlin heart in Edmonton. Uh, yeah. And and that had a few complications of its own. Yeah, they sent us to Edmonton to yeah to be put on a mechanical heart, and and uh, and right away her heart, uh, you know, it's an artificial device, so there's always a risk for it to produce clots. And uh, usually that happens over over time, but uh, for Lydia, it started happening right away, and uh, they kept trying to manage the clots. But eventually, the some of the clots bl- broke off and caused uh, her to have several strokes in one, yeah. in one evening. Yeah, and she's still uh, suffering some of the effects of that. I just noticed that she's putting stickers in the book here, uh, still kind of mostly using just the one hand. But she seems to be doing quite well with that hand. Yeah, uh, how is how is the uh, recovery coming from the from the stroke? Uh, she's recovering uh, fairly well. There's there's no way to predict how how quickly somebody recovers from a stroke, but kids they say usually recover almost to fully, you know, how they were before. Yeah. Well, already her arm is working quite a bit better. When the heart came, now this to me was the most amazing part of the story. Uh, when there was finally a heart available for Lydia, um, and they did the surgery. From what I understand from your Facebook page and from the update page that your that your wife had. Um, when they did the surgery, they found an infection, and they said that had they found that infection earlier, they wouldn't have done the surgery? Um, there's a chance that, yeah, if they had, uh, for about a week before her heart transplant, uh, Lydia was showing all these kind of signs of, of an infection, but they couldn't find one anywhere. And, uh, and, and because of how severe that infection was when they opened her up, yeah, they, there's a good chance that they wouldn't have considered her a good candidate for the heart because uh, um, it, could have, it could have attacked her new heart. And, yeah. uh, and there's and there's so very few hearts to go around and and, and several other kids waiting for uh, for hearts so they, they might have yeah might have disqualified her as a heart candidate uh, so you're in Edmonton and uh, you, you had a lot of support there as well from uh, some some local connections here as well yeah we had a connection through my sister there in a church and and uh, and also actually somebody else from our church had another uh, group of people there helping us out so you know donated furniture and food and and really helped us just to manage those uh, those aspects of the trip. Yeah, and, and that's the things that, that you kind of, like when you're out there, I mean, you're 100% focused on Lydia and her recovery. Uh, when other people can help you out with all the other stuff, I mean, that just makes it all possible. Yeah, yeah, we couldn't have, uh, it would have been really hard to do that and to have all our other kids out there too without, you know, we basically had to move there. Yeah, because we didn't know how long it would be. So yeah, uh, going through something like this with your with your daughter, where you're faced with a heart transplant and the possibility of losing your daughter, and then when you come through the other side, I mean, yeah. uh, emotions you never probably even thought you could experience. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to describe it. Um, you know, for us, like the you know, scaring, if, if fearing to lose Lydia, that's been was going on for about a year before that heart transplant. So we were almost uh, almost used to that. Um, that that feeling because it uh, I know and, and you have to do regular life stuff too so it's uh, it's hard to it's hard to explain <laughs> yeah uh, but you emotions. lived with that fear for a long time we did yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but she looks fantastic uh, just so full of life even I'm watching her work on this book here and she's just uh, she's got a mission <laughs> yeah <laughs> so now what's the uh, recovery like at home how are things going at the at the house now uh, going really good at the end of the trip uh, there was a uh, they were quite nervous about how much she was eating. Uh, she wasn't eating very, very, very well, and they were going to maybe send us home on an artif- artificial feeding tube, which wouldn't have been any fun for, for anybody. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's very, very uh, disgusting food that's fed through the tube and, and quite cumbersome. But uh, now, when as soon as she got home, she right away started eating about three or four times as much as she was eating in the hospital. So she needed to get some home cooked food and. And uh, and just a place to play and be with her brother and sister. Well, I'm sure she was pretty homesick too by then. Yeah, I don't even think she really understood it when we said we were going home. She yeah, she didn't quite put it together until we were actually 
on the plane and, and driving home. <laughs> yeah. You have a, 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 a string of beads that tells her story. Do you have that here? Tell uh, us about the string of beads. They just started doing this uh, actually this year for, for heart, uh, for cardiac uh, kids. And, uh, and basically it's a, it's a long string. And, and for every procedure that Lydia has had done and related to her heart condition, uh, she gets a special bead that's, that's designed just for it. Um, uh, so, so far we have a, we have about a, I don't know if we'd call this maybe a four foot long, uh, chain and it's, uh, we haven't even got to where Lydia had her heart transplant yet. Oh, really? Uh, so this is... Yeah, this is up to the, just, she hasn't even got her Berlin heart, uh, piece on there yet. So there's still lots to come. It'll probably be about three times as, or, you know, double or three times the length as it is now. So this is just a small part of her journey. It's a small part of the journey. Yeah. So every, every needle poke and, and every time she's admitted to the hospital, that's this little smiley face here. Wow. And uh, every transport, ambulance or airplane. Uh, so they kind of mark every little thing has a different meaning. And uh, so you can see at the end of the day how much stuff she's, you know, and it'll, it'll continue to grow as, uh, as she keeps getting tests and procedures.